I made a little bit of a mistake. One of the moderators from our Discord, which you can join, there's a link in the description, invited me to a midweek tournament to go along with him and play some Warhammer. Now, I didn't know what army to take, because obviously I don't normally take Space Marines. I decided to take an army that I'd played once before and see how it do in a tournament setting, and uh, this is how it went. Death Watch got nerfed, and it'd be cringe to take Death Watch again. I've got that prize. I've quite literally got that trophy. I don't know if you mentioned I won a, I won a golden ticket to Atlanta because I'm really good at Warhammer. And then something hit me. And that was my other Space Marine army. I really enjoy playing the Grey Knights on stream against Matt the other week. And we play battle reports every two weeks on a Friday evening, game night on Fridays at 8pm. I do have a pretty good list in mind, I think. Maybe it'll be good fun. I'll go to this tournament, I'll teleport around, shoot some flames through walls, and have a great time. And that's what I was thinking. Right up until I submitted my list last night, and then everybody is playing Death Guard. Death Guard. You know? Death Guard. It's only a 26 player event. There's four Death Guard players. And Death Guard, I don't know if you know, are actually really good right now. And all they do is spawn Plague Burst Scrolls and Predators. But I was like, you know what? It'll be fun. It'll be fine, you know? And I'll meet three new friends. Right up until the parents came out. And my day was ruined. What is this? Magoo versus Mikey round one. Magoo was like, do you want to come to this event? Me and Magoo drew each other round one. I don't know what his army does. He's got like five vehicles. Look at these. What do I do about all these trucks? I can beat one vehicle a turn. That's one truck a battle round. We're going to get breakfast together. And then I'm going to have to kick his shit in. Otherwise, the embarrassment will be too high. And I'll have to sell the channel. Touch wood. It'll be okay. What do you mean there's six trucks? Four, five. Fuck! There's six trucks. Here it is. Here's my list. It's beautiful. It's a brick of ten paladins with five side cannons. Got the Grandmaster with the Sigil of Exigence. I've got the Caladus Assassin. And Magoo was telling me today that every Orc stratagem is a battle tactic for some reason. And I was like, why? <laughs> I've got the 10 incinerators rather than proxying. I've got 15 interceptors. I've got the Kaladus and I've got the Thunder Hammer on the Red Knight with the flame as well. Grey Knights seem to have like loads and loads of tricks. That's like the main issue is like trying to like, you score loads of points, but you also don't kill a lot. So your opponent scores loads of points as well. So that's the mistake. I've decided to take Grey Knights to, a, to an event that is full of people spamming vehicles. So I'm pretty sure one of the Death Guard lists is like three Plague Bears Crawlers, three Knights, and then some infantry. And Grey Knights don't deal with, don't deal with that. They don't fuck with that shit. One tournament later. Lads, ladies, I was underestimating just how fun they are to play. Watching my po opponent's head explode and to figure out what Grey Knights do and what they can't do and how to stop me doing what they want, I want to do is actually hilarious. Because Magoo pointed this out to me at the start of the game. <laughs> they have a stratagem called mists of deimos right now i played this against matt on stream the other day one grey knight psychic unit which is basically every psychic unit your unit can make a normal mover up to six as if it was your movement phase and that's all i read i stopped reading i did the warhammer thing i read the first sentence and that was it and he was like no you can go into reserve i was like what he's like yeah you can go into reserve i was like no you can't he's like yeah i was like nah don't be silly one cp to go back in reserve if you get too close that's this is really good that's really silly Checked it. What's it say? Uh, put it to fucking deep strike. <laughs> put that bad boy into deep strike. The Magoo, single-handedly, gave me the most broken strategy in the game because I hadn't read it. Mr. Deimos, every time they end and move within nine, you just go, bye, and disappear. I'm pretty sure you can then rapid ingress in the same turn. So you can disappear into the sky when they get too close, and then spend a second command point to rapid ingress in their movement phase and deep track back down <laughs> is very funny. This single-handedly, like, screwed every single opponent I had. They were like, oh, I'm gonna... Oh, wait. Wait a minute. I'm within nine. I'm like, yeah. If you do that, you're within nine. You can teleport, can't you? I'm like, yeah. I can teleport if you do that. And they're like, can I go back? I'm like, yeah, go on then. You know, I'll let people play around it. But I'll be like, oh, you're within nine if you do that. And they're like, ah! <laughs> probably probably like 
borderline Warhammer torture, I think. Watching your opponent just squirm, trying to get close, and then not being able to. Especially when you have a brick of ten paladins with the sigil of excellence. Now, it's only once per battle, but it's on a grandmaster with ten paladins. When the bearer's unit selected as target of a range attack, you can then remove the bearer's unit from the battlefield and then set it back up again anywhere on the battlefield more than nine away horizontally. As soon as you are targeted on the paladin unit, that people really want to kill because it's fucking paladin. So you just teleport. <laughs> so not only can't they get anywhere near, if they shoot the unit they really want to shoot, that teleports out of the way as well. So it's only once per game, but it meant not one opponent shot that unit. <laughs> Waiting for Mikey to play in Warhammer World and show the rules writers how this works and then going, oh, that's interesting, then getting it nerfed. Yeah, true. That will happen. But these two abilities, by far... <laughs> Arguably broken. <laughs> so you can't go near the Grey Knights and you also can't shoot the units you want to because you have 15 interceptors that shoot, move after they shoot or they just charge into something and hide behind a wall because they're great at doing that. You've got the purgation squads that don't need line of sight so they shoot through walls. Then if you are in danger, you, but your opponent has gone, oh, well, next turn, if you don't, you got to kill this unit or, or, uh, or I'm going to get you. You just go, okay. Well, I'm just going to pick up three units because at the end of every turn, you put them in the reinforcements, set them up again next turn. He's prognosticated arrival, which is essentially like the inceptor strategy uh, ability. Deep strike three away, which is great. And interceptors could shoot and then move. So they could deep strike three away, shoot something, then move. So you can be like, oh, I can't go to this objective because you bodied it. I'm going to shoot and then just tag the objective because I've, I can now move six. So, so those like few abilities, I actually never deep strike within three, but I had it in my pocket, so it forced my opponent to play around it every turn. Those three abilities, though, not being able to shoot a unit that they want to, not being able to get near a unit they want to, hilarious, you know? Just anything that my opponent wanted to do, they couldn't do it because they were just like, oh, actually. And I was like, yeah, that's unfortunate, isn't it? That's really, that's really awkward for you. Every time my opponent wanted to do something, I questioned them because I could counter it, which is really funny. Really, really funny. Now, the problem is, is Grey Knights are really good at playing secondaries, you know? You draw a card, you have a way to get it. You essentially put some units in reserve before you draw, because it's at the end of your opponent's turn, draw into your cards, and then use your deep striking units to go get those cards. So Grey Knights usually nail secondaries, which are obviously normally the hardest part to do. The problem is, with Grey Knights, is they don't have, on paper don't have a great a deal of damage output they have everything in combat barring the dread knight strength six minus two two pretty mediocre the great thing is is that gray knights have loads of attacks they have base three attacks at strength six they hit on threes the paladins have four hitting on twos the terminators have four hitting on threes with lethal hits and, and all the side cannons all the ap1 pretty shit but two damage and eight uh, strength eight and three shots each and you can take six in a paladin unit with a grandmaster i only had five you get loads of weight of fire but the problem is you don't really kill tanks now i took the grandmaster and i took him with a thunder hammer and the plus one to wound relic if you're a demon you get plus one damage as well now the problem is he's only five attacks and he hits on fours with the hammer i think it should be threes and the, the sword should be hitting on twos because the sword is only strength 10 minus two d6 damage whereas the hammer is strength 14 minus three d6 plus one it's not that great. I played against Magoo round one. He had two squigger saws, essentially the character one. Knob on Smasher Squig, Warboss in Mega Armor. He had 30 Beast Snagger Boys, 20 boys, six trucks, two aggression unit, Mega Knobs, Squig Hog Boys, and then 15 Stone Boys. The Paladins facing down to Mozrog Scragbad, which almost lost me the game because I shot everything into him and charged him with the Paladins. I got 40 odd attacks into him. I did use a devastating wound stratagem for free because there's one two CP strat to make psychic weapons, devastating wounds. So I was like, I can use it for free. It's a battle tactic. So I'll do that because the grandmasters can do it once per game. And I left him on like three wounds or something. And then his entire army charged the paladins because the, the great knights are great. They can teleport away. They can miss the day boss. They can get targeted by a range weapon. And then, and then that can redeploy them. Okay. However, if I'm locked in combat, the only way I can teleport with a Paladin unit is the Relic, the Enhancement. So whilst I was I was locked in with Mozrog Scragbad, the big bad boy on three wounds, he moved his entire army, entire army to charge the Paladins 
And he was like, do you shoot your face? I was like, oh, there's a Terminator on one wound, didn't they? And he's like, oh, yeah. I was like, shoot it. Kill him in combat if you want with the pistol. And he's like, oh, yeah, I'll do that. And then rolled the dice. And I was like, Magoo, don't do that. Don't do that, Magoo. And I just went, no. <laughs> because I tricked him. Because the only way I could have saved the Paladins is if he'd shot into the unit of Paladins with something. Then I could have activated my enhancement. Because that doesn't say you have to be in engagement. You can't be in engagement range. It's when you're targeted, you just pick them up and deep strike them. Because if you're in combat, you can't use the stratagem. So I went, Magoo, just shoot your pistol, mate. Kill that last Terminator. Then when you charge it, you'll be able to kill a big one. I was like, yeah, good idea. Started rolling. I was like, Magoo, don't. He's like, what? I was like, no, don't do it, Magoo. And he was just like, what? And I was like, I've got the enhancement. And he's like, oh my God. And I was like, obviously, I'm not going to make you do that. But it's very funny to watch. <laughs> so I absolutely blue balls them by just going, shoot your, shoot your pistol, Magoo. Shoot it. Go on. Listen to the voices. Shoot your pistol in combat. <laughs> and it almost, I mean, I would anyway, but it did not, it would have cost him a lot that. It would have been like, it would have been brutal because my brick of ten or like eight paladins would have just been able to disappear and deploy somewhere else and his entire army was in the middle of the board not being able to do anything. So that was funny. So the way this game went, it was scorched earth. Terrain they were using was really interesting because obviously they got this like foreground or something like that. They basically said you might be you like actually there's actually a good example because there's, there's some here. You can see here, like these buildings have like created the same shape with just like three two walls and a base, basically. Because half the terrain is like this, like just walls, and then half the terrain is like this. You can't use any of the floors in these buildings. So it's a bit it was very 2D, I think is probably the best way to describe it. Very 2D, which I was thought was quite interesting. Now, it wasn't like a hundred win. But the fact is that I scored 83 points, 35 on primary and 38 on secondary. But except for turn one, where I had overwhelming force, uh, which is killing its own objective and rides hiding everything. I pretty, I didn't max every card, but I scored both cards every turn. And that's something that I was finding Grey Knights were doing really well. Being able to score both your cards every turn, even for three points, is really good. Because it just means you rack up points, you know, like, like 38 points on the secondaries. Obviously, with Ryan, his last two turns, obviously, like, a little bit different. You know, I'm obviously winning at that point. I've obviously killed a lot. But um, but the fact is that, like, not being able to score any cards in the later turns is, like, really brutal to play. Whereas you can go, Grey Knights can just, like, pick stuff up, drop down again, and then whatever you draw, a lot of them are being positioned or kill stuff. But a lot of the time, when it's kill one, like, no prisoners, you can kind of teleport to objectives that don't have a lot on. Like, you can deep strike and kill Gretchen, you know, because you can teleport, shoot them, and then move on to the objective to take that objective. You can deny effect, defend stronghold. Uh, but a lot of a lot of missions are being be in a place, you know. No prisoners. Oh, well, there's only four kill ones. Oh, my God. No wonder Gretchen is so good. So you're just drawing cards and you're always scoring them. And then primary is the issue. It's like being able to, like, try and stay in a place and stay safe is actually really hard because as soon as your opponent gets too close, you want to teleport away. It's obviously super strong and super useful. But, like, you're not going to, like, max out primary and your secondaries. What you are going to do is max out your secondaries. That's, like, kind of, like, almost guaranteed if you play the mission right. And you keep holding... You keep, like, having assets. So if you start losing units, then no, you're not going to be able to. However, round two, I actually played the list I didn't want to play. I played Will Reed with Death Guard. As I said, this is the one list. I was like, all oh, the Death Guard lists, these, this is by far the scariest one. He had Typhus, he had Death Guard Icon, Death Guard Icon Bearer, which makes his Plague Bearers OC3 and makes a contagion range of 12 inches. Got the Lord of Virulence, which essentially spots for the Plague Bearers Crawlers. Four units of Plague Marines, all exactly the same. Two Death Guard Predators, three Plague Bearers Crawlers with Entropy Cannons, two Rhinos, two Nurgling Units, and three War Dogs. This was brutal. This was so brutal. I drew the parries. I was like, oh, this is it. This is, I'm, over, I'm losing this one. I might win the next one, but I've definitely lost this one because famously, Grey Knights can't deal with tanks and he had a lot. Now, the, the layout for this one was interesting. Search and destroy objectives. So essentially, you've got one, one here, but then the capture zone is like, like this booby. So like that, then you have one in the middle. However, it was also hidden supplies, which means hidden supplies is you delete this objective and you go, I'm going to put one here and then one here, six inches away. And what that meant was, is the objectives were wide open again, <laughs> which I was a bit like, oh, okay, cool. So this was an interesting one because of the strike squad trick. Me and Will have been talking about it because cultists in Death Guard can do the exact same thing. Your deployment lines are like 
something like this for deployment, maybe even worse. But essentially, this objective and this objective are both less than six away from the deployment zone, the capture zone, not like the middle of the objective, the capture zone. So what you can do is deploy a unit that scouts on the front line, like so, and then that same unit goes first and puts their fucking models in a line like this. You get the two objectives at the start of the game because you scout six onto the points and sticky objective them both which means you capture both objectives and you can walk away from them again. So what that did was I went first and I did just that. At what I drew round one. Yeah, deploy teleport home or investigate signals and then deploy teleport home. So because I didn't in the center, I just did that straight away. I was really worried about death guard because my entire army has a two plus save. So I'm like, that, that minus one save is going to be really brutal because everything's going to be... I'm going to have like a three up save and then AP is going to come into it. I'm going to be losing models in droves. I'm going to be using the paladins very fast. Until I reread... So Grandmasters are very similar to Trajan, Trajan Valoris. They have a really cool rule, which custody players, you've got something now. Might of Purity. Whilst this model is leading a unit, leading 10 Paladins, uh, you can ignore any or all modifiers to the characteristic of models in that unit and to any role or test for models in that unit, excluding modifiers to saving throws. The crucial bit, is the saving throws part. You can't ignore modifiers to the AP because a if you start doing that, then no AP would work against you, obviously. However, you do ignore modifiers to the characteristic. And let me tell you what this says. It says, uh, while an enemy user with a contagion range works in the save characteristic of models in that unit by one. And this is Death Guard Spread the Sickness. So what I realized after turn two, again, not reading the rules, was that Might of Purity actually ignores both the toughness modifier of Death Guard, reducing your toughness by one while you're nearby, but also any other modifier that they could choose. So those new rules they got... Paladins just go, I don't care. You can't affect me. It's very fun. So so anything that can change the modifiers or change the characteristic of a of a Grandmaster's unit, the one he's attached to, because obviously you can attach him to Terminators and stuff like that. Now they can't reduce your toughness, so you're always toughness five, which also means they're not wounding you on twos or threes a lot of the time because the Paladins have the Warden ability, essentially, of if you're higher strength than their toughness, so if you're strength six or higher, you're minus one to wound. They don't make you strength four, so now you're winding on threes instead of twos. You're actually winding on fours instead of threes. But they also can't modify the save characteristic by being in contagion. So my paladins always had a two up save or a four up in one, depending. Obviously, AP is a thing. You can't really ignore that. The fact that the paladins and so and anything that ignores characteristic modifiers ignores their save modifier and their toughness modifier at the same time makes those bricks a lot harder to kill because Death Guard famously also can't kill anything. <laughs> you know, like. Grey Knights can't kill tanks. Death Guard can't kill anything. <laughs> what they do is reduce your save, reduce your toughness, and then spam things winning on twos and they make you like, take loads of saves. So yeah, so like this game was really weird because it's like I didn't really kill much. I just, again, I just scored cards. And then during the last turn, it was priority target. So this one is hold one, hold two for each turn, including turn five for both your opponent as well. You set whoever went second. Then at the end of the game, you score 15, or up to 15 for every objective you hold. So this game was like really weird because I was expecting the, the all the tanks to run to the middle, knowing that Grey Knights can't kill them. And then I just have to try and like fight through. And if I win, I win. If I don't, I don't. He kind of like kept all of his vehicles back and was using these Plague Marines to go to the middle. And I was like, I'll just pick up the Plague Marines then. Because essentially what you do with Grey Knights, the best thing you can do is... You can only use the strategy, Mr. Deimos, once. So you only have one unit that is in danger of having to use it. And all the uni other units stay away. And then the, the Paladins, whilst they've got their enhancement available, they can kind of do what they want. You know, they're far enough away usually. Uh, they can sh come out and shoot some guns, try and take down some infantry, try and do some damage to a tank with the, ra the amount of shots. They might do three or four wounds. You know. While they've got their enhancement, they're like untouchable. As soon as they target them, if there's anything that's too scary, I'll just teleport them away. So I think Death Guard, again, they're just really slow. They're good. They're pretty good at killing stuff now because they're just going to make everything minus one save characteristic while in Contagion and just kill a lot quicker. But they're just really slow. And so I played this game and I actually won, which is really surprising. I think I killed one Plague Burst Crawler and two of the Knights. <laughs> so I only killed four vehicles and it had like nine. <laughs> 
But just like, if you could just outplay, outplay your opponent, then it's great. But last round, I actually played against uh, Aiden from the Disgusting Resilient podcast. And he was a great, great lad to play. He's really, really fun. But he had like a really tricksy Death Guard army, which I thought. So Chaos Lord in Terminator armor, which had a relic that could like extend the range of contagion of him. So he could like, and he could do like weird mortal wounds through walls. And, like within 12 inches, he could do more wounds. Death Guard Sorcerer, which had a bunch of shooting attacks, Kurt and Leper, and doing like mortal wounds as well. Lord of Virulence, as I've already mentioned, the spot off of the payback squad. So anything with blast weapons uh, gets plus one to hit and ignore cover, like a land speeder. And obviously with three Plague Burst Crawlers, that's really good. And then he's got Mortarian. Now Mortarian, again, with triple Plague Burst Crawler, makes me want to play this list. Ignore modifiers for your units within six, so they don't suffer the minus one to hit from direct. And also provides real ones to wound. So now what you can do is you can reduce the toughness of your opponent by getting close to them, reduce the save by getting close to them, and then give yourself zero ones to wound and uh, ignore modifiers to the shooting. And you're getting plus one to hit from the Lord of Virulence. So you're actually getting fucking like twos to hit, sixes auto wound, and then twos to wound really once. It's really good. So the Hellbrute's nice because he can do ranged contagion. If you target a unit and hit it with a ranged weapon, you can give that contagion to so reduce the save by one, etc. Death Guard Predator Annihilator. So this was the four last cannons. I'm not sure why everyone's taking Predators with Death Guard. I don't know why they seem to be the in thing. I don't know if Predators are that good. Two units of three Death Shroud with all the flamers of Death Shroud are great. Three Plague Burst Crawlers, 20 Pots Walkers, and two units of Nerglings. So yeah, this is like a lot more of a tricksy army because it had a lot more assets rather than just like going all in on vehicles. It's got like the cultists that have sticky objectives. It got the Hellbrute. Whilst Hellbrutes are relatively easy to kill for the points, I do like that ability a lot of being able to pop their head out and give out Contagion. This mission was hammer and anvil one objective two objective three objective one like there and then one like there what was a bit weird about this one is this objective this terrain piece whilst on this picture was actually not measured to be there because this one is a lot further away than this one as you can see so we're using the measured one and what that meant was is the capture zone it's not going to be straight was essentially like that and same here but like i'm going to do a lot smaller just so you get the idea so the whole point was, is he kind of came over and said that for these objectives, if you're in this building, you can hold the objective, but you are within an inch of the wall. And I was like, okay. So those objectives, you can't get near without getting charged. Right. Cool. At least I can hide behind it, but I'm going to get charged. So that objective, you couldn't hide behind the wall either. So the three objectives in the middle, just like every other game we played today, had no cover you couldn't hold the objectives whilst being out in the open without being out in the open or you could have one model up against the wall and you could hold the objective but you can get charged so like to be fair you couldn't sit in one spot and shoot all the objectives unless you were stood like here now in this game it didn't matter too much because most of Ada's shooting is indirect so it doesn't matter this was a really weird one because it was also sites of power but the whole point of this mission is to hold objectives in no man's land with characters and score points. So each objective is worth three. If you hold it one in no man's land at the end of your command phase, it becomes empowered. And if you score from that objective, that's whilst it's empowered, you get an additional three. So whilst holding it with a character, it's essentially worth six. I ran my assassin in here turn one. Aiden never engaged. It's got to be like 24 points, I think. But my assassin sitting here until turn four before he managed to get to her. Aiden actually managed to kill every unit bar the paladins purely because paladins had the trick of you can't get anywhere near me and if you do i'll teleport and if you shoot me i'll teleport the fact is that within direct you can obviously target the paladins anywhere on the board but it also means you target them anywhere on the board they can appear anywhere on the board as well so yeah like sites of power i scored a bunch on primary and actually outscored aiden until the last turn even with the cards like round five i slowed down because aiden's list was actually a lot more killing than i realized because the lord of virulence was spotting units with the plague burst crawler and obviously, like, you couldn't hide on these maps if you're trying to hold objectives. Because spot units with the plague burst crawls, they were just, like, hanging around in the deployment zone. And then the Lord of Rose will spot them, and then more time to ignore the modifiers. And I couldn't use true silver armor either, because that's a modifier to the characteristic. So he was not only making them hit on twos, he would given them ignore cover and AP1, and I can't reduce it by one. So essentially, I'm back up to threes. What I found against Will is that like he never get managed to give them ignore cover and he was hitting on fours a lot of the time the plague burst crawls were hardly ever hitting and then when they did i had a two up save 
Whereas Aiden's list, every time he shot the plague burst crawlers, one of them would pick up a unit, or maybe two of them would pick up a unit, then the next one was shooting, rather than me losing nothing to the entire shooting. So Mortarian and Lord of Villains are like 100% crucial in, in, a, in a Death Guard list, I think. Also, the plague burst crawlers are just really good at being annoying because they've got two up save, the T10, they've got an invun. Um, they've got flamers on them or entropy cannons, but flamers are arguably better. Uh, I do like the flamers on them. Maybe one entropy cannon, two flamers, which is what Aiden used. I actually quite like that because you're going to have one kind of like holding the objective at the back and then the other two start rolling forwards. But like the Lord of Virulence also buffs the units attached to. So he attaches them to a bunch of death shroud with flamers and then he gives them reroll wounds to range weapons. So the flamers auto hit and reroll wounds. So like he's giving reroll wounds. Mortarian is giving out reroll wounds to everything that's near him. They're ignoring the modifiers. You've got Mortarian who's great. It was obviously a very good angry hitty piece. And you've got the 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 buffing the plague burst crawlers on his way. So he kind of like rolls with the plague burst crawlers, chilling, going really slow. The plague burst crawlers and the death shroud, etc. deal with the stuff they can do in Mortarian. And then when Mortarian can't be killed, you just send him in. You know? Yeet. I think this is a super, super close game. As you can see, Aiden didn't score hardly any cards turn one and two because he used new orders turn one. Drew hot storm hostile. I was not holding any of the middle objects. Even if I was, I was going to teleport away. Started to score a lot more toward the end because Aiden was managing to pick up my unit. So at my scoring was really quick at the beginning. As you see, scoring nine points in three turns in a row in the primary. Cards, pretty shit cards because of overwhelming force. Again, overwhelming force killed each objectives. We couldn't see each other, uh, but I only managed to kill one. This is a really big fuck up of mine, actually, because um, I tried shooting the one unit on an objective, didn't manage to kill it, and then charged uh, into Typhus and some Potswalkers, which were the unit on there, and uh, failed to kill Typhus, so didn't get too far overwhelming force. But I rolled like a 12 inch charge, which forced me, basically, on this mission, on this objective, essentially, the objective's here. Uh, Typhus is like here, right? And there's like, there's like a, <laughs> there's like a four inch gap. So basically, when I charge, I want to charge like this. I want to do one, two, three. I want to put another one there and another one there. So they can all fight, but when I kill Typhus, I pile back onto the objective. That's the plan. However, the annoying thing was, is I rolled like a 12-inch charge. So what that meant was, is every model had to get base contact, which means they all end up round here instead. So when I kill Typhus, I can't pile back onto the objective, which means I wouldn't have got secure no man's land because i was only holding this one and now i was no longer holding this one but then i failed to kill typhus so it didn't matter but it did mean uh, i only scored three on overwhelming force rather than six and i couldn't get secure no man's land uh so i really fucked up that turn and then like the next couple of turns i didn't score that many but um i managed to score a bunch on primary but then aiden had the same problem of like not being able to score primary right until the end scored a whole bunch we scored three points difference on primary and we scored exactly the same on cards. Again, he had like a bit of a slow start. Did really well in the middle. And then at the end, he drew investigate signals and bring it down. And he killed bring it, killed my Dread Knight turn two. Again, like just the, the raw firepower from all the artillery was really good. And the fact that it was rolling towards me was difficult. Because I didn't kill a Plague Burst Crawler. I didn't kill the Predator. I didn't even bother in uh, like touching Mortarion. All I was doing was jumping around the ball. I killed the Hellbrew because I was like range contagion shit. Get rid of that. <laughs> But it did cost me a Dread Knight, so I was like, okay. But what it did was I just jumped around the board and just tried to stay away from him and picked off units that were easy to kill. Like, I killed all the Pox Walkers quite quickly. Uh, I managed to kill the Death Shroud units relatively quickly, barring one failed charge. Uh, but Aiden was doing the same. Whilst I was jumping around the board, Aiden was just, like, picking up the units that he could, like, get rid of, like, all the power, power armor units. He was just, like, killing everything. So, again, I only had the Paladins remaining at the end of the game and they were in my deployment zone holding my home objective. So, they weren't doing a lot. But the problem was that I never wanted to engage Mortarian. The best thing you probably do with that sort of list, if they're holding Mortarian back to be played by Crawlers, just leave him there. Just be like, take out the chin. Um, but all in all, a great day. A great day. Three wins uh, for the Grey Knights. I've played them four times and I've won four times. I am quite literally the best Grey Knight player you've ever met because I've never lost. But yeah, so that's how that's how I came third. I went undefeated. I didn't score enough points to get up to the top placings. But... I won a prize at a tournament. So if you just take a few of those words out, I won a tournament with Grey Knights. Okay, it's the same. It's exactly the same. The words are all there. But I'm going to add another trophy to the shelf. There it is, baby. 
Lads, I'm gonna need a bigger shelf. It's starting to bow with all that weight on top. 